What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Undrafted Views, where here we talk sports from the sideline. And today we're going to answer the question, who will come out of the playing tournament for the East and the West Conferences? Let's get into it. So now that we have about 10 games left in the NBA season, the playing tournament is on the horizon. Let's talk about the Western Conference and who you think might come out of the 7-8 matchup as it stands right now. As it stands right now, it's going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves, for sure. 7-8 matchup because right now at 7 is Minnesota and 8 is the Los Angeles Clippers. However, I really believe in my gut that the Minnesota Timberwolves will be number 6 by the time the regular season is ended. They're going to be in the 6th spot and Denver will be number 7. So, again, still in that matchup, whether it's Denver or Minnesota Timberwolves, I just believe whatever that matchup is, the losers will end up being the Clippers, and they'll have to play the winner of the 8 uh, 9 10. That's what I believe. Oh, okay, okay. So, if it stays the way it is and the Wolves have to play the Clippers, I go with the Wolves as well because I'm telling you, they've turned a corner. That Patrick Beverly addition – has helped them tremendously. Cat is playing with so much confidence right now. But really, he's been playing like this all of his career. We're just now really paying attention to him because the Wolves, they're now relevant. They are currently 9-1 in the last 10 games that they've played. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about great wins. Like, I, I don't even, I still say, and I may have said this in the previous video, that they could potentially upset around one. For some reason, I don't know if it's going to be considering now <laughs> that the Warriors, you know, we don't know what that looks like for them moving into the playoffs. Um, but the Grizzlies, if they have to play Grizzlies, because if the Grizzlies maintain their number two seed, it's going to be a great matchup. It's going to be a yeah. great matchup if they move up to the um, six seed, which I really my bold prediction is that they will. The Minnesota Timberwolves, then they will end up playing what uh, the Warriors again. The likelihood of the Minnesota Timberwolves getting out of round one is very great for me. So depending on their matchup, of course, right? But they're killing it right now. They're just killing it right now. And I think yeah. it's what the Minnesota uh, community needed for the Timberwolves. If you think about it, the Timberwolves have not made a playoff game, playoff seed in the past 16 of the 17 years that they missed it. And I think the mm -hmm. last time they made the – um the last time they went to the the only time they went to the conference finals, I want to say it was like in 2003, four around that time. So, what y'all been time. doing? Yeah, it's, it's time. time. Mm -hmm. It's time. And you know, Patrick Beverly is gonna poke the bear, so he gonna make somebody upset on the roster, the opposing roster, and they are gonna get kicked out the game. It's all a scheme. So when teams realize that that's what Patrick Beverly is here to do, he's not really here to really play the game. <laughs> <laughs> he's here. He's here to get somebody all riled up, get a tech. You know, be the gnat, mess up people's headspace, and then the Timberwolves is able to just sweep on in. That's mm -hmm. just amazing. Yeah, well, Patrick Beverly got ejected here recently, yeah, he you know, poking uh, uh, Serge Ibaka. That was a little unnecessary. So when they move into the playoffs, it's important that he doesn't do it. Doesn't he doesn't go that far because they need him on the court. You know what though? It just reminds me of the bubble game when Patrick Beverly and Paul George were on the sideline oh. laughing, joking, you know, making comments. You remember that, right? Yeah. And yeah. what happened? And what happened to the Clippers? Mm -hmm. Go. Went home. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's almost, this reminds me of that. So my cautionary tale for Cap would be be careful about allowing that type of influence from Pat Beverly to you know, persuade you to probably do something you probably wouldn't ordinarily do. Just be mm -hmm. careful because you'll find yourself embarrassed, kicked out. I mean, or, you know, embarrassed at home. It was, it just reminds me of that. That whole fiasco reminded me of Patrick Beverly in the bubble. It just did. It was like, yeah. ooh, catch you. Don't want that smoke. No. Because Paul George is still trying to live that down. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the 9-10 matchup in the West. Right now, the Lakers would play the New Orleans Pelicans. Who you got coming out of that matchup? It depends. Will Brandon Ingram be back? Because mm -hmm. if Brandon Ingram is back and CJ McCollum, you know, continues to stay and able to play, I'm going to get the leg up to the Pelicans in that. 
Okay. LA, the Lakers and Pelicans matchup. Yes, I, I would. Mm. But if Brandon Ingram is not back, then, you know, Lakers, this may be your last chance. So, yeah, I actually have the Lakers coming out of that just because it's one game. And I think LeBron could, mm. you know, rally the troops like he like he did against uh, when the Lakers played Toronto Raptors. They got contribution from everybody. I think they could do it for one game. So I have the Lakers coming out of that matchup if it happens. However, the Lakers are only one game ahead on the New Orleans Pelicans. So anything could change on this. Anything can change on this. And I want to say the Spurs may be two to three games behind mm-hmm, the Pelicans mm-hmm. right now. So mm-hmm. again, if if with these last few games that are in the regular season, if Brandon Ingram doesn't come back, the Spurs can technically be in the 10th spot. So it's so close, right? Um, but again, if the Lakers happen to move on, to win the 9-10 matchup, it would be great to see the final run of the Clippers-Lakers matchup for the oh, AC. That finally, would be yes. an amazing game. You know, we've been waiting for, we've been waiting since the bubble for that matchup, right? That type of matchup. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And considering that the Clippers have swept the Lakers this season, yeah. regular games, that's going to be an amazing game. So, really, if people really, if, if the NBA <laughs> powers that be really want a great matchup, for the playing tournament, that would be one of them. So if the Lakers and Clippers ended up in that final, you know, do or die game against each other, who's coming out of that matchup? If history proves itself to be something we can rely on, it's going to be the Clippers. If history proves uh, itself, right? <laughs> um, but if not, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Clippers in that matchup. Yeah, especially, oh, especially if Paul George comes back. Paul George ain't coming back. (laughs) I mean, he's done. Like, I had the Clippers coming out, too, so they'll solidify the eighth seed. But I don't know how they're going to fare up against the Phoenix Suns. Oh, I'm just telling you, it it don't even matter. (laughs) Clippers going home in round one. (laughs) It's fine. This is strictly playing tournament discussion. We'll do another video on playoffs. But at the end of the day, we already know who's coming out of round one. Anybody that's matched up against the Phoenix Suns, they're not going to make it out of round one, yeah. regardless of who it is. So, yeah. So, let's move into the Eastern Conference. Uh, as it stands right now, the Raptors will play the Brooklyn Nets. Who you have coming out of that matchup? Uh, Nets, for sure. The Nets will come out of the matchup. They will get the seventh seed, regardless of who they play um, in that 7-8 matchup. I feel the same way about uh, the – East that I did about the West, and I do believe that the Cavs will end up in the seventh spot, and I believe the Raptors will end up in the sixth. That's by the end of the season. So regardless of who the Nets play, because right now the Nets are the eighth seed as we speak, regardless of who they play in that seventh seed, the Nets will be the seventh seed um, going into the postseason. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't even think they're worried about it. Like, like, okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we're okay with being in a playing tournament because they know whoever they have to play first What's going on? Or at least they're going to advance, and Nets will advance out of that matchup, regardless of where they play as well. Now, of course, if they they're probably hope they're probably wishing that they would play the Cavs, so Kyrie can play. If they see now, I don't understand. If somebody drop down in the comments and let me know if the seventh and eighth playing tournament matchup is the Nets and the Cavs, where will the Nets play? Will they mm. play in New York or will they play in Cleveland? Because that will determine whether or not Kyrie plays. Right. So I'm just curious about that. We already know that if it's Toronto in the Nets, Kyrie will not be playing that series at all because I believe the game is going to be in Toronto. Right. So. Mm-hmm. I think with the Raptors, Cavs, whoever has the uh, the season series, um, whoever won the season series, I think that determines where the game will be played. But if it stays the way it is right now, I have, and the Raptors have to play the Brooklyn Nets, I definitely have the Nets coming out. However, the 9-10 matchup with the Hornets and the Hawks, who do you have coming out of that matchup? The Hornets. The Hornets. The mm-hmm. Hornets are going to come out of that matchup. Let me tell you, just tell you something. If the Hornets play the next set of games like they played against Dallas Mavericks, in that last <laughs> Dallas, Mavericks ma- Dallas Mavericks matchup, any team that they go up against in this playing tournament outside of the Nets, they're going to win. The Hornets, oh, oh. Oh, they, I was like, when I was watching that game, I said, did the Mavericks know they had a game today? <laughs> the yeah. Hornets came out 
guns blazing, lit up Dallas. Dallas was not ready for what this Hornets team. So if this Hornets team mm-hmm. show up in the next play, in their playing tournament, whatever position it is, as long as it's not against the Nets, because I think they're going to lose against the Nets regardless. Yeah. But if it's any other, other two teams, Nets, I believe the Hornets will be the ones that will secure the AC. And I still say that even if it's the Raptors, if they play like they played with Dallas Mavericks. So oh. I have the I have the Hornets coming out of the um the um nine ten. Yeah, I have the Hornets coming out as well, and they'll end up playing the Raptors. But I have the Raptors because mm. uh I just like what I've seen from them. They're young, yeah. they're athletic, they're long, they don't give up. I just have the Raptors solidifying the eighth seed. I can support that because of experience. I can support that because of their experience and the fact mm-hmm. that they ha- and I don't know if OG and Anobi will be back, but Nick Nurse can make it happen for sure, for sure. However, if it's the Cavs, because I still think the Cavs will be in the seventh spot, the Hornets will be in the eighth spot. I believe the Hornets can win a matchup against the Cavs. This Hornets team that just played the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but um, so then what we're what what I can agree to is that the seventh and eighth spot in the East, depending on if the matchup stays, if the standing stays the way it is right now with the Raptors at seven. It's going to be um, Nets, Raptors. Nets at seven, Raptors at eight to go into uh, the playoffs. I can support that. All right, you guys, that wraps up this episode on who we think will come out of the play-in tournament. Make sure you drop down in the comments and let us know your predictions as well. And we will see you guys on the next one. But until then, peace. Peace, y'all.